Hi everybody, Tammy here, and I wanted to go over a quick run through, hopefully it'll be quick, on how I created this little audiobook. It's nothing special, I just kind of threw it together, it took me a few hours to do, um, but I was just thinking about how our students can demonstrate some of their knowledge and some of their learning um, that they learned along the way, and I thought this was just an easy um, way to do that, and it's <clears throat> using the tools that we have readily available. So um, I just want to go quickly about some of the things that I did, some of the items of interest. So to me make this book, first off, I just created a Google Slides presentation, just any any Google Slides. It's just generic. And then I just kind of wrote out, uh, wrote through um, the concept that I was looking at. In this case, it's um, Pythagorean Theorem because I'm a math person. And so I just kind of went through and I'll just kind of quickly go through this slide. So I just have an introduction and then I kind of go into the, some of the history about Pythagoras and then kind of setting it up until, I mean, I'm on slide eight and I'm talking about the Pythagorean theorem. So um, a lot of setting up so I can picture the students doing a lot of research and, and making this kind of like a research paper, but it turns out to be a cute little audiobook. Or maybe it's not so cute. Maybe it's really, really awesome. So, um, so I'm just going to go through and then we get to the end here. So let me show you some of the items of interest that I have here. First of all, I did a little um, like preview um, slide here at the beginning because I found that when I published it and when I want people to see it, I would give them the link after publishing to the web and I'll show you that. But when I did that, sometimes the first slide wouldn't um, log or sync with the audio. So I just did a little preview slide. So surely by the time they hit, um, they click to the next slide, the audio is ready to go. So um, I have a little preview slide and I do have a little music with it. And it's this little, um, little square, you can hardly see it. Um, that is actually a YouTube video <laughs> that I used for background music. Um, and then I was able to, let me see if I can just show you, I'm going to get rid of myself here for just a second. Um, when I am on here and I do the format options, I'm going to go up to video playback here. So this was a little YouTube video that I used and I said, start at two seconds. And I actually used that same video all throughout. Um, I just copied that and pasted it on all of my slides, but each slide I'm starting at a different place. So you're not just always starting at the same um, place in the video. So just kind of interest that kind of goes with, so here's my third slide, I'm starting at 110. So I just kind of listened to, um, to the video and just thought, you know, just something a little different than the previous slide. So this one's at four minutes and 10. Not that the previous slide's gonna take you three minutes to read, but it's just an, a part of interest on this video. So the whole video is like two hours long and it's just background music, but I was able to choose different parts in the video. And notice that you can barely see this little square down here, but it's there, it is a video, it's not meant to see, it's just meant to show. And then if, I, if you see right here, the option here autoplay when presenting. So it's just going to automatically play and the people may not even notice that it's there, but they'll notice the little soft background music um, in the background. So, um, so that's one of the elements that I've added. I've also added some GIFs here. Um, and yes, I call it GIFs. And so I've got um, just an image here and notice that it has a transparent background. So those are PNGs. So if you want a transparent background image or yeah, so you just choose the .png file. Um, and you can usually do a Google search for an image and just put the word transparent in there and you'd be able to find one. And then I also have, this is my Bitmoji and it's um, Bitmoji with a Snapchat filter. So I connected my Bitmoji with my Snapchat and went to discover in Snapchat and then um, looked at Bitmoji. Um, a lot of people use the Bitmoji dance. This one was Bitmoji reading and it's just in a chair. And then um, I will add um, a little bit to the end of this video on how you can do that. And then I've added my Bitmoji um, images throughout. 
Um, another element of interest is this one right here. It's just called, um, I used AutoDraw, which is autodraw.com to create these shapes because I am not an artist and it's only because I haven't practiced. I'm sure I'd be awesome if I had practiced, but I didn't. Um, so if I want to do like a boat and I have right now, I have the AutoDraw magic pen. So I'm going to draw a little sailboat and we're going to see um, if they can. Yes. So in the, as you do the drawing, they're going to give you some examples of, do you mean this? Yes, I meant that the whole time. Didn't you know? Okay. And so after that, um, you're you're good to go. So I'm going to select it now and you can change the size of your canvas here. So, and then you would just download it, um, download it right here. And it downloads as a, um, as a PNG, I believe, or it may be just a JPEG. All right. And you're able to do different things here. You can do some um, text, you can fill in the background, um, you can make some shapes here, but you can just start drawing and they're going to give you um, some great options. So play with that. It's autodraw.com. So I use that to make these, these shapes. So you can create your own, own images, which is kind of cool. But then I added a whole bunch of other images of interest. Um, sometimes um, I like to do this to my images is just give them a little drop shadow. So if you click on it and you go to format options, which is usually found up here if you don't have it pulled up, you can change and make all of these changes here. And what I usually do is a drop shadow. And you can change the transparency, the angle, the distance, blur radius, change all those until you got what you like. So it just gives a little bit more depth, um, pun intended, to uh, my images. And then um, just went through as I wrote and inserted images. It's really as easy as you're on the slide. You go to insert image and you actually have um, the option right here to search the web. And so I could do a search for images right there and they'll show up over here. And then I just drag them on, which is which is kind of nice. If I can't find, there is a limit to what you can find right here. Um, you can actually do a separate tab and open a Google search there for some reason. And um, you don't get all of the same things that uh, you would get in a, um, in a separate tab. Um, let's see. And then again, I have my bitmojis and then I have another um, Snapchat filter um, from bitmoji dance. So the big thing um, with this is the ability to do an audio. Okay, so I inserted an audio file and what I did was right here, insert audio, and then I just found it in my Google Drive. So just make sure that your um, files are in Google Drive before you can insert it into your Google Slides presentation. So to make those audio files, I used vocaroo.com. Right here, it's super easy. You just hit the record. And I'm recording right now um, and it's super easy to do. And then I stop and then I can play it. So, and then if I like what I, what I want, uh, what I have here, and I don't want to do it again, if I want to do it again, you just hit that, but I can save it and share it here. And then I get all these options. And what I normally do is download it. And that's going to download an MP3 file. You can also just keep it housed on Vocaroo, but um, I usually want it that MP3 file so I can insert it in my Google Slides. Um, you can also take that file and make it a QR code. Um, I've seen some cute ideas by using QR codes of um, like maybe a band member playing a piece and then they um, record it with Vocaroo and then they have that link and they um, create the QR code and they put it on a Christmas ornament, which is kind of cool. And then they give it to their family members and then the, kid, the family members can scan the QR code and it's their kid playing a Christmas carol on the instrument, which is kind of cool. But normally I just download it and that's what I do to um, insert the audio file. So what I did was I just created an audio file of me reading the page and then I would just insert it here and it doesn't need to be um, shown, but it is there. And I would want to just um, show that on the format options at the, at the top, audio playback, 
it's automatically starts playing automatically. And then I have the volume here when presenting. Hide the icon when presenting so you're not going to see that icon when it's in present mode. So um, it'll stop, start automatically and you won't even notice. And I've got the music playing automatically every time as well. So those are the basics here. Um, I will um, give you a little bit of more instruction for your Bitmojis in Snapchat, but that's basically it. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go to File and Publish to the Web, and I'm going to not click on here. I don't want to start the slideshow because I want people to to click when they are ready. And um, so if you do want to do a slideshow for some other purposes, then you can set that here. But I just want this link right here, and then that's the link that I would share, and it would publish this in presentation mode, and everything would be um, automatically starting, and people would just need to click or spacebar or forward arrow um, to go through the book. So. It's not too hard, not too difficult, but um, a lot of fun to put together. So let me share a little bit about um, Bitmoji. Okay, so this is um, the step-by-step -step on using one of those Bitmoji dance scenes and adding that to your Google Slides presentation. So I'm going to go to Snapchat. So this is done through Snapchat, and I want to make sure that my Bitmoji is connected to Snapchat, and there is a process to do that. Um, and I'm going to go back to um, the home screen here. Hold on. And then down here in the lower right where you see the red, that's what I want to choose. Once you're in the, um, in the Snapchat app, then you want to go to Discover, and that's where we are here. And then you go to the search up at the top, and you'll just search for Bitmoji Dance or a Bitmoji um, reading, and then some of these things will pop up. There's not a whole lot to choose from, but um, check them out as you can. Um, there, This was the reading one um, that I was using, um, kind of cute. And then there's also the dance. Um, you can do some dancing here. So what I normally do is I will go up to um, the door that has a white background or something that has a plain background and I will hit record. So you just hit record for as long as you want to and I will do that on a loop and it's so I let go and it will be um, done on a loop here and you can get to where you want it where you can time it a little bit better. Once you've got that done, then you'll just hit download. So you see in the lower left, you see a little speaker, um, and then the download button. So you want to hit that, and I have my downloads set to um, going to my camera roll. So it is now saved in my camera roll. And so now that's done in the camera roll. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go to my browser on my phone and go to unscreen.com and that's right here and I'm going to um, I'm going to start over here so when you go to unscreen.com I'm going to upload my clip I'm going to go to my files and I'm going to find what I just downloaded from Snapchat and it's going to start uploading and you can notice that it's on a transparent background, which is what I want. Um, but be right below that, you can choose um, trans if you want to save it as a transparent background, or um, if you want to do a different color, um, that's up to you. Um, you can do like a green screen if you if you want to use that. Um, but um, I usually just do the transparent color. And then once you've got that loaded up. Then you scroll down here to the bottom to where it says download. And then I choose that little down arrow and I'll choose a GIF. So it's going to download to my camera roll as a GIF. And then that is what I'm going to upload to my Google Drive. So I'm able to insert those into my Google Slides presentations. So 
I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. And that's basically it. Um, so I hope the um, this inspires you. I hope it inspires your students. This tool is so easy that the youngers could even put something like this together in a Google Slides presentation, or you can make one for them. So really, the sky's the limit. Um, let me know how you use it, and I hope this inspired you. I hope you have a great day.